Hi, Dr. Plechner. Can you tell us a little bit about what the endocrine immune surveillance is? Yeah, what the endocrine immune surveillance is, is the regulation, the hormone regulation of the immune system, making sure that uh, all the glands are producing the hormones correctly and they, the hormones are regulating the immune system correctly. And that is what endocrine immune surveillance is. I see. How does endocrine immune regulation work in a patient? Well, with, it starts off with the production of cortisol, which regulates the immune system. It's then the cortisol is broken down and excreted by the kidney, broken down the liver and excreted by the kidneys. Uh, then the pituitary asks the cortisol to produce more ACTH, which it does. And so this rhythm is back and forth and back and forth, uh, and it regulates the immune system and makes sure that the uh, one of the thymic lymphocyte that's genetically predisposed uh, protects the body from viruses, uh, from fungi, candida, the whole bit. And the B lymphocyte, which produces antibodies, uh, it will protect the body uh, from bacterial infections, uh, will make antibodies to vaccines, and that's its main function, period. And when they do function, the patient is healthy. And if it's not in balance, what happens? Well, when the cortisol is not produced correctly and the pituitary can't get more cortisol to complete this endocrine cycle, if you will, uh, the high-level estrogen that is produced deregulates the immune cells. And what happens then is uh, the receptor sites for the thyroid are bound because of the estrogen. Uh, the B cell is deregulated, so it's not now producing antibodies. And from a protective factor for the uh, estrogen, what happens is in the production of antibodies, which the B cell does, the mucous membrane antibody called IgA is deficient. And in a human or in a dog, if that level is below a certain level, then any replacement hormone that's taken orally will not work because the body will not absorb it. And at the same time, then the T cell uh, can react against tissue, causing damage to the tissue, autoimmunity, and not protect you against viruses. So you start to wonder where your hepatitis viruses, uh, why they remain in the body so long. And I've shown with uh, cats with feline infectious uh, anemia and some of the others, the HIV viruses, that it all comes from a T lymphocyte that's not regulated properly, so it's not protecting the body against virus. Once you correct the imbalance and identify it, and that's what Plechner syndrome does, the regulation of the immune system comes back when you've properly funded their hormone, the hormone regulation. And can you tell us a little bit about what IgA is and how it all works? Well, IgA is a, an antibody, or they call it an immunoglobulin. Uh, there are five of them that the B cell, the B lymphocyte, produces. Uh, over the years, I've found that uh, the immunoglobulins E and D in the work I'm doing with Plechner syndrome seem not to be that important. Uh, I work with IgG, IgM, and IgA. Now, what the IgA is, it covers the surfaces or protects the surfaces where there are mucous membranes. So that's your joints. That's your mouth, your digestive system, your respiratory tract, your urinary tract. Wherever there's a mucous membrane in your body, the B lymphocyte production of IgA is supposed to protect that. So when there is a deficiency in the IgA, depending probably from your genetics, uh, the impact areas can vary from a rheumatoid arthritis to an irritable bowel syndrome to chronic kidney, renal, uh, bladder problems food sensitivities, insect sensitivities, in other words, and vaccine reactions. And you wonder, too, with young children, if this type of an imbalance is there, when they receive a vaccine, it's not going to be processed correctly. Because I know in animals, it never is. And then we start getting all kinds of severe reactions secondary to vaccinations. And most of that comes from uh, an IgA deficiency. Classic clinical signs or clinical symptoms of an IgA deficiency can be a food allergy, can be an insect sensitivity, can be a vaccine reaction. Is there a way to test IgA deficiency? Yeah, very. it's a simple blood test uh, that is with Plechner syndrome. 
This is all part of Plechner syndrome. The syndrome checks cortisol, total estrogen. It checks your active thyroid T3, your uh, storage T4, and it quantitates IgA, IgM, and IgG. And the neat part about this is in funding each patient, which can be different, you're only giving enough hormone to bring that B cell into a normal range with its antibody production. And when that happens, a T cell seems to follow it also. So it's very simplistic, but it is critical and it's common and so frequently uh, seen, but it's, it's not ever measured. And I think one of the problems is with medicine too, uh, everything seems to be so segmented and it's not putting the patient back together again. So everybody has the tree, but nobody has the forest. And so what I'm trying to do with my syndrome is show that it's holistic medicine and that it's W-H-O-L-E. I want to put the patient back together and look at foods, the ability to absorb foods, your digestive enzymes, your hormones, your antibodies, the diseases they seem to be producing, uh, identifying and correcting it.